Hello everyone and welcome to another Fontaine speculation video. Today, I'll be going over some speculations I have for areas we'll be able to visit in Fontaine. I'll start off by going over the areas we already have heard of, then I'll be going into all the speculative ideas I have. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. While we don't know about too many landmarks or towns in Fontaine, there are a couple that we have heard of, which I'll be covering now. The first of these areas is a town by the name of Petricor. This town was name dropped by Xavier in the Tatara Tales questline back in Inazuma, where he says that it's his hometown. Xavier describes the view from his study in Petricor, saying that he could see a majestic waterfall outside. Interestingly, this town is also mentioned in the main drop from the hydrohypostasis, due of repudiation. Here, the waters of the town are uniquely described as surpassingly pure. Due to there being pure waters here, I think that this town will be a quiet and cozy area, free from any turmoil happening over in the main city of Fontaine. The term petrichor itself actually refers to the pleasant earthy smell that occurs when rain falls on dry soil, which supports the idea of a peaceful and pleasant town. I imagine this town will have a combination of gentle rolling hills and majestic mountains paired with waterfalls. Whatever it ends up being like, there's no doubt that it'll be beautiful. Anyways, there's one other area I'd like to talk about in this section, that being the Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering. Usually shortened to just the Fontaine Research Institute, it is dedicated to the study of machines and energy, and it's where a lot of Fontaine's inventions originate from. Unlike the Academia in Sumeru, it does not exercise control over the nation of Fontaine, and is simply just a place for research. Now, the institute was recently rocked by a massive explosion during a catastrophic experimental failure. The experiment was run by senior technician Edwin Eastinghouse, and it was an attempt at dealing with Fontaine's waterline crisis. The explosion did end up killing Eastinghouse, according to what we are told by Anatole in the Vibrocrystal Reharmonization event. However, this does lead me to believe that both the waterline crisis and the energy crisis will be very important in Fontaine, and that we'll visit the Research Institute a few times to learn more and help out. Anyways, I think it's time to talk about what the entrances to Fontaine will look like through both Liyue and Sumeru. Starting with the way in from Liyue, we have been told that this would be a place known as Chowing Village. Zhongli has described this place as the gateway between Liyue and Fontaine, which means that it will likely be added to the game very soon. If not in version 3.8, it could still be added alongside Fontaine in version 4.0. I've rambled about Chowing Village in Genuvale enough in other videos, but I still want to briefly touch on one part of the area real quick. That area would be Yilong Port, a location mentioned in the Echoes of an Offering artifact set. We don't know much about this area, and it isn't even confirmed that it's part of Genuvale. Given the artifact set it was mentioned in though, it's fair to say that it is. I think that Yilong Port could be the last area of Liyue before the border with Fontaine. There could be a large river or other body of water that separates the two nations, with ports on either side to transport people and goods across. Yilong Port would be Liyue's port, and there would be another across the waters in Fontaine with a similar size. Of course, neither would be as big as Liyue Harbor, but they would still be big enough to show their importance. The Fontaine Port would also be one of our first impressions of this new nation, so it would likely be very beautiful as well. These ports could also introduce the Wave Rider back into mass use, like how we used it in the Golden Apple Archipelago, or to get to the other islands of Inazuma. Fontaine is likely to have a lot of water, so it would make sense that we get access to our little boat. We could also get introduced to the diving mechanic in these ports, or perhaps later in Fontaine's main city. Anyways, 
I'd also like to talk about a potential entrance on the Sumeru side. Fontaine is likely north of Sumeru, so it is definitely possible for there to be a direct path between the two regions. I think we could find this entrance by following the main river that flows through the Girdle of the Sands, as it could originate in Fontaine. However, in the World Quest and Artist Adrift, Julian tells us that he traveled through Chenyu Vale to get to the Girdle of the Sands from Fontaine. It is possible that he took an indirect path, but at the same time, he said the sandstorms picked up the moment he set foot in Sumeru's bounds. This makes me wonder just how big Chenyu Vale will be, as it has previously been described as being located in northwest Liyue, and the Girdle of the Sands is quite far from that. Instead of the river leading directly into Fontaine, maybe the shoreline and beaches found in this area could lead there instead. A beachside area of Fontaine could end up being inspired by the White Cliffs of Dover, with beautiful cliffs and perhaps even waterfalls in Genshin's version. While we may not enter through this area in the story, it would still be pretty cool to see. Anyways, I think it's time to talk about the big part of Fontaine, its main city. As you could probably tell, my ideas for Fontaine don't just come from France, but also England and even Italy as well. I think influences from each of these real-life nations and other surrounding ones would make for a very beautiful nation, while still having a unique and fantastical charm. Now, I think the main city of Fontaine would of course be inspired by Paris and perhaps London, but I also think it could have a very heavy influence from the Italian city of Venice. Venice is a beautiful coastal city, and with Fontaine being the nation of Hydro, it would be the perfect basis for the nation's main city. Like Venice in real life, the city of Fontaine could be built on multiple islands and would have many bridges connecting each landmass. Of course, this city would then also have a lot of rivers, introducing an opportunity to have NPCs sailing through the waters. Some of these NPCs could even have mobile shops, which they run from their boats. The city could be located in the middle of a huge body of water, perhaps like a miniature version of the Mediterranean Sea. I think Fontaine could have a lot of influence from the Roman Empire, and having its main city being in the center of a giant lake that's inspired by the sea the Roman Empire controlled would be a great parallel. As for getting into the city, we may need to use our wave rider to sail in, or even the upcoming dive feature to swim across and find new things under the waters. Now, there will of course be many important buildings and landmarks within the city of Fontaine itself. To me, the most important is probably the Court of Fontaine. The Court of Fontaine is led by the Hydro Archon Fossilor and the Chief Justice Nouvellet, with it also likely being the governing body of Fontaine. The court's building could be inspired by French cathedrals such as Notre Dame, and also some of their royal buildings like the Palace of Versailles. Even though Fontaine may have an older building style, it will definitely be more advanced than other nations we have visited so far. We could be introduced to new technology that will allow us to move around the city quickly, such as the fictional air rail system written about by a character named Ramsey in his diary. Anyways, there is one more landmark in the city that I'd like to mention here, that being Genshin's equivalent of the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is quite famous in real life, and with Fontaine being inspired by France, it would make sense to include it. As for its importance, I think we should move on to some thoughts about Celestia. Celestia is currently moored above Fontaine, leading many, including myself, to believe that it will have some importance within the region's story. As for how Genshin's Eiffel Tower could connect to Celestia, I think it could have been used to communicate with Celestia sometime in the past. It may have been used during the time of the Lord of Amrita, the previous Hydro Archon, or perhaps even earlier, during the Divine Envoy era. Alternatively, during the Divine Envoy era, there could have been an Ermin Soul Tree in Fontaine that was worshipped by the people. However, just like in Dragonspine, this tree would be destroyed by a divine nail. After the nail started to affect the surrounding area, the people could have built this tower out of Ermensul branches and some technology to suppress the dangerous effects. 
The nail falling here would then explain the lake the city of Fontaine would be built in, and why it would also be built on several shattered islands. All of this would mean that the tower would be very important to Fontaine, and could be a landmark we visit multiple times throughout the Archon quests there. Now, I'd also like to talk about a certain lake in Fontaine, which could potentially be the same one that the city would be located in. Back in the Tatara Tales questline, Xavier reminisces of a lake that held the reflections of the stars and the moon, such that walking along its banks was like treading amid the celestial skies. To me, it sounds like this lake may be right underneath where Celestia is in the sky, and would also be an important location for us in the Archon quests. Instead of being where the city of Fontaine is, it could be a separate lake that is treated with massive respect by the people of Fontaine, so much so that they rarely travel on its waters. Celestia not being above the city of Fontaine also opens up some ideas for a unique area underneath the heavenly abode. Other than the mysterious lake, there could be a place which I've called the Eclipse. This place would be within the shadow of Celestia, somewhat eclipsing it from the sun and stars, hence the name. The Eclipse would have unique animals and monsters influenced by celestial energy, which would make them stronger. The area could also be home to some strange celestial artifacts and ruins, which could be dangerous to ordinary people. As the Traveler, we would be able to withstand any strange effects that would be found here, allowing us to discover any hidden treasures and lore that could be waiting within. Speaking of ruins though, I'd like to talk about some other ruins we may be able to find throughout Fontaine, as well as influences from ancient civilizations in the nation. Sticking with Celestia for a bit, I'd like to talk about Stonehenge. In real life, this monument is aligned towards the sunrise on the summer solstice. For Genshin's version, instead of being related to the sun, I think it could be related to either Celestia and or the stars. It could have been a site used for worshipping Celestia, or it may have been used for astrological predictions long ago. With real-life Stonehenge being more akin to a calendar, I think Genshin's version may go the astrology route. As for ruins related to Celestia, I think it would be cool if we could find many ruinous castles around Fontaine that give lore on both ancient civilizations and Celestia. Europe is filled with castles, and I think it would be perfect for Fontaine to take advantage of this and have these beautiful landmarks in the game. Within the ruins of these castles, we could find stories of other gods in Fontaine back during the Archon War, or maybe even after. Perhaps there could be a world quest series that involves us going from castle to castle with someone, eventually ending at a final massive castle that gives us a huge lore bomb about the Four Shades or something like that. With Fontaine being the fifth nation out of Tavat's main seven, it would be a great time to get more big lore drops. Now, before I end, I have one more area that I'd like to talk about. Back during version 2.4, we were introduced to Ankonomiya, a civilization that had been lost underground for countless years. I think a new area like this could be introduced in Fontaine, but instead of being dark and mysterious like Ankonomiya was, this area could be more colorful and welcoming. It would also be inspired by Atlantis, perhaps being an underwater city within a giant dome, still allowing for some light to get in from the surface. This area would have a similar backstory to Ankonomiya, falling under the surface during the conflict with the second who came. However, they wouldn't have fallen as far, and would have had the technology advanced enough to build the dome around the city, protecting it from the ocean waters. As for its location, it would be west of Fontaine, underneath the ocean, as Atlantis was described to be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It could be a stopping point on our way to Natlan, perhaps being added to the game in version 4.6. Either way, I'm really hoping for an underground area that isn't so dark. Anyways, that's all I have for today about Fontaine, and some of the landmarks we may be able to explore within the realm of water. Of course, there were a lot of real-life landmarks I didn't cover here, and we'll probably get way more than what I talked about. 
Fontaine is getting closer and closer, and I can't wait to explore it. If you want to hear more of my ideas for this upcoming nation, I recommend checking out my Fontaine Speculation miniseries, which has four other videos at the moment. I also recommend my videos on Chenyu Vale speculations, as well as the two new artifact sets from version 3.6, Nymph Stream and Vorukasha's Glow. I would love to hear what other parts of Fontaine you're interested in and what questions you have about it in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.